There is a report that the Giants do not intend to trade Evan Ingram this year. He's due $6 million next year. Uh, it's a lot of money for a guy who keeps dropping balls and hasn't really stayed healthy and just uh, appears like it's just not going to work out here. I was last week, I was of the mindset that we should probably hold on to him this year and explore the trade next year, give him that one extra year. You've obviously seen enough out of him. If it's just when it clicks, it's going to be awesome. So it's just like hoping it clicks in that last year in 21. Matt Lombardo for, for fan sided, he had three trades the Giants should try to make. One is Ingram to the Colts for a fourth round pick. That seems low, but I mean, I don't know that you can. I don't know how you convince the Colts otherwise. <laughs> you know, it's like we know the numbers aren't there, but he's actually really great. And here, here is a highlight reel of his five plays that made us believers. Is it even five? I mean, there was a play against the Bucks last year. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not, you know, you see that one play and you're like, why is this guy not just fucking dominating the league? But a uh, fourth round pick, that sucks. I would have hoped to get a third. But Golden Tate to the Packers for a sixth round pick. Sure. Why not? <laughs> I mean, we're going to end up with so many goddamn sixth, sixth round picks. We had a bunch of seventh round picks last year including Mr. Irrele Irrele Irrelevant, who ended up being like our starting inside linebacker. And then B.J. Hill to the Bengals for John Ross, which is very interesting. I don't know that the Bengals will go for it, but maybe. Lombardo also had an article about uh, what happens if we're buyers, which, you know, considering how shitty the NFC East is, uh, is not out of the question because even if we do lose against the Bucks and we're at one and seven, the fact that we can still beat the Cowboys in the finale, and then the Eagles and, Red and uh, Washington team in the next two weeks after the Bucks. that would mean we'd have a four and two division record. And then it's like, maybe just win one or two more games and we win the East. <laughs> so if we are buyers, which I'm sure Gettleman is delusional like me, um, John Ross is at the top of the list, Bengals receiver. And then Adam Thielen, Vikings wide receiver, has always been rumored to be part of a trade and I can understand how he might want to be out. He had the comments, I guess, last season about, you know, Kirk Cousins. So would be nice. I don't see it happening. And then Marvin Jones, hmm, maybe. AJ Green, I don't, I feel like he's just ju judging. I haven't seen any of the games, but I haven't seen him connect that much with Burrow, Joe Burrow. So I think he's maybe past his prime and Dunzo, but is he better than Tate? Who knows? And then Jags receiver Chris Conley, who I don't know anything about, but the Jags are kind of in tank mode and we already got CJ board from them. So why not? Maybe he can recruit Conley. But yeah, it seems like Tate's not the answer. Shep's back. Slayton's a little banged up. Ingram's not your guy. So you do, you, you do need that third threat, I think, to make it work. You look at like... Uh, I guess the the team from 07 and 11, 07, you had Plax, Amani, Steve Smith, and then 11, you had Cruz, Manningham, Knicks. So it's nice to have that third guy. As I mentioned, we traded Marcus Golden to the Cardinals for a six-round pick. Uh, I guess it's as good as, yeah, it's probably as good as you're going to get, even though he had double-digit sacks last year. He, he, I mean, he wasn't even a starter this year and didn't really see the field at all. I think if he came out and put up some big numbers this year, you might've got like a fourth or a fifth. I guess we're glad to get a sixth. 